and welcome to Overdrive. I'm Shireen Bhan. As you can see, we have a packed show lined up for you. But let's start the show with Sirish's latest long-term car. He does have all the luck, doesn't he? The past six months have been extremely good because this MH14 BX5223 has been my long-term test car. It is of course the Mercedes-Benz, the E-Class with the 350 V6 diesel engine and I can tell you right now, it has renewed my love affair with Mercedes-Benz. The V6 diesel engine is of course fast, 0 to 107.4 seconds is pretty darn quick. But the main thing that the E-Class excels at is ride quality and comfort. And this car has given me tons and tons of driving pleasure while being completely hassle-free and stress-free. I've done innumerable trips from Mumbai to Pune and back, trips from Pune down to Goa, and I've enjoyed every single kilometer of it. And when this car goes back, I'm going to be a very, very sad man. This W212 Series E-Class marked a welcome return to the build quality of old Mercs. The ones that could outlast a nuclear holocaust. This particular car was the first E we tested in India nearly two years ago. And has gone through road test evaluations with various magazines before joining our long-term fleet. And there hasn't been a single squeak or rattle to talk about. The only thing it's required are a new set of brake pads and fresh tyres. Faultless, the only word required to describe the E-Class. The E-Class has of course got rivals and its natural competitor is the BMW 5 Series. Earlier we competed with the 525D but now we have the bigger engine 5 Series the 530D with a straight 6 3-litre diesel engine and that is a more natural rival to this V6 Mercedes. The third obvious choice would be the Audi A6 but India gets the new A6 by August-September so we don't have it here. Instead, we have a very interesting competitor. Let's go out and meet them. And our interesting rival comes from the UK and that is the Jaguar XF. But first, the obvious rival, the BMW. The 5 Series has always been the sporty choice in this segment. But the downside to that has been a very stiff ride quality. And that's what BMW have worked upon in this generation of the 5 Series. They have softened it a bit and the ride has become much better. But it's still not as good as the E-Class. But then there is an upside, and that is the sporty chassis. It is involving, it engages you, and then you can switch it into sport mode or sport plus mode. And then when you switch off traction control completely, the 530D turns into a complete tire smoking hooligan. And to add to all this is this brilliant engine, truly the best in this trio. It's a 3-litre, 6-cylinder, turbocharged straight-six engine that makes 245 horsepower and 540 newton meters of torque, which is mated to an 8-speed transmission. And it all comes together brilliantly. And this car is truly fast, 0 to 106.4 seconds, and that is a whole second quicker than the E-Class. And the E-Class is not a slow car, not by any stretch of imagination. So you can imagine how fast and how involving and so thoroughly enjoyable the 530D is. This is a car that once you start driving, you do not want to stop. The ultimate driving machine in this segment. So what don't I like on the 5 Series? Well, it has gone soft and that's a good thing from the suspension point of view. But on the styling front, I'm not a big fan. The earlier 5 Series, it was loud, it was aggressive, it was in your face. It was an angry car. The new 5 is mild and mellow. And personally, I prefer a car that shouts out its aggressive intent. The interiors too, they're still too mild and mellow. Of course, the materials used, the fit and finish, they're all top-notch. And this driving position is brilliant. And the sporty steering wheel 
is sweet it all urges you on pushes you on to drive like a bmw driver drive the car a way a bmw should be driven Now we usually don't mention Jaguar in the same breath as Mercedes or BMW and that's because Jaguar still seems to be too new to India despite being owned by Tata Motors they haven't yet begun India assembly operations and nor are the dealers as vast or widespread as their German rivals but i think that's doing the cars injustice because in the XF they have a mighty fine product in fact if styling were the sole judging criteria the XF would win this test hands down it's a fabulous looking car and even from the inside there are a lot of these features that surprise and delight you like this ac vents that swivel open the cylindrical gear selector knob the touch screen a nice unique and different cabin though not as cutting edge not easy to use as a mercedes or bmw cabin and space inside is also a bit tight in my experience jaguars have always been great fun to drive cars and the XF is no different under the hood there's a 3 liter V6 diesel that gives great performance 0 to 107.49 seconds is quick but the E class is a few tenths quicker while the BMW is over a second quicker in terms of ride and handling the XF strikes a very good balance comfortable and easy going when you want it to sporty and involving when you want to drive it hard and fast ultimately though the E class still has that edge on luxury and the BMW is still a car if you want to go utterly mental down your favorite twisty road. So let's start with the Jaguar. If you are looking for a sexy distinctive looking car, the Jaguar is for you. And the beauty is despite looking so good, there are no compromises. This is a very good car to drive. It's refined, it's fast, it's frugal. The only downside is it's slightly cramped from the inside, but I don't think that's its biggest problem. In fact, its biggest problem is its price. And at 50 lakh rupees, it is the most expensive in this test, and it doesn't really justify its premium. Now, the cheapest car in this test is actually the 530D, and that's despite having the best infotainment package and the best engine. In fact, it's a truly superb engine, and the chassis truly complements that engine. If you are a driving enthusiast, apply here. But what I have realized over the past six months is that what you need is ride comfort and luxury. The E-Class it has a great engine. It performs well. It handles well. It's fun to drive. But over and above everything else, it is a comfortable car over which you can do a lot of kilometers. In this test, this is the best all-round car, and this is the car I still recommend over these two.